Hey y'all and welcome to this week's tutorial. I am excited about this one. It is not for kids. It's for me just because I like it and I needed a little spot of sunshine in my life right now. So here we go. Um, I am making a layered sort of not quite pressed botanical uh, piece, but you can absolutely use pressed botanicals if you want. I just happen to have a few little stems of dried baby's breath and it's just really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work up a little frame situation for it uh, and just so you get a sense for what we're going to do it's going to have a wood frame on the front and the back it'll have two layers of clear acrylic uh, and the baby's breath will be between it there's going to be a clear acrylic sort of frame spacer in between those so that my baby's breath since it isn't pressed so that there's room for it if you're using a pressed flat flower maybe you made the flower press earlier earlier this year uh, and have been actually pressing stuff, I have not, uh, <laughs> then you can make the choice to um, skip that spacer, but uh, adhering things will be a little trickier. So just make sure you've got a, uh, some some nice weld on or something on hand to, uh, to, to squish your layers. So uh, that's enough sort of preamble. Let's go ahead and dive in. So mine is going to be a boho arch shape. Uh, it would be simple to follow along with this tutorial with any shape you want. If you want to do a rectangle, you want to do a circle, an oval, whatever. So uh, right now I'm just going to make my boho arch. And if you're using a simpler shape, just, you know, make your shape right now and then follow along with me. So I'm going to just start off with, oh, let's say a four inch by four inch rectangle. Go ahead and remove the fill and then hold this down and come over to ellipse tool and do a four inch by four inch ellipse. If you've done a lot of my tutorials uh, already, then you know how I'm making this shape. It's the same same uh, technique that I've done probably a half a dozen times on this channel. So uh, the important thing here is to make sure that your circle and your square are the same dimension. So both four by four or both three by three or both two by two or both eight by eight, you get the idea. And then to line them up, where the top edge of the square intersects or bisects that circle, just cuts it right in half, okay? And then once you have that, go ahead and select both, come over to your Pathfinder panel and click to unite. If you don't have a Pathfinder panel, come to Window Pathfinder and you should have everything you need. Let's select our boho arch shape or whatever shape that you have. So um, if you needed to build a different shape, go ahead and just catch up and, and, and get to where you have the, the shape that you want. Okay, I'm going to select my, my shape, go to object, path, offset, path. Let's try like a negative 0.25 inch. And I like that. I think that that's a nice uh, width of frame. Okay, so I like that. But you can feel free to mess around with the uh, measurement here and see what you like best. Okay. So here we go. We've got, we're going to do a couple things with this. So let's just select both and move it out of the way. Let's go ahead and take the outer shape, so the largest shape, and copy paste it. Okay. And in fact, what I'm going to do is open it up a new document. Um, I often like to do separate documents for separate materials. So I can cut all of my, in this case, clear acrylic boho arches at the same time. Okay, and we'll go back to the original one, uh, and I don't need this shape in the original one because this is going to be my document for my white oak plywood, all right? Um, if you're doing a diff uh, different materials, that's okay, but that, this is what I'm doing. So now I have that, um, and what I want to do at this point is go ahead and select both of these, swap the fill and stroke just so you can see what we're working with here. We have a small boho arch and a larger one. Select both. I uh, don't remember what shape should be on top, so let's or what shape is on top. So click the inner one, the smaller one, and just go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. It's important that it's on in the front or on top, so that when we select both and come to Pathfinder minus Front, it subtracts the right thing. If you've got the other shape on top, it'll be all weird. So here's what we have now. Uh, we basically removed the inner shape from the outer shape. And so now instead of having two separate boho arches, we have uh, one kind of frame piece. I'm going to swap that fill and stroke again. So it looks exactly the same. And actually, you could have just left it how we, how we had it before. But I think that this, in general, is a neater neater way to work. So here's what I'm going to do at this point. I am going to, um, let's see here, copy it and paste it because I want a front and a back. 
wood frame on mine. If you don't, that back one, not actually necessary. Um, for me, the way that I intend to hang it, I need, I need a lip on the back. And so I want that back uh, to be framed with wood. And just while we're on this subject, I'm going to be backing these two layers, just the backs, with 3M adhesive. I use the 467. The 300 should be fine, too. Um, and it is just worth its weight in gold. It is, it's, and it feels like it because it's so expensive. But um, I've bought one roll a year ago, and I'm still, I'm looking over at it right now. I have uh, half the roll left. Okay, so it really lasts a long time. It makes your projects a lot easier. So I just, you know, I really, really, really suggest that. Now I'm going to, uh, I don't remember if that's still copied, so go ahead and copy it again. Come to your clear acrylic document and paste it in. Now I'm putting mine over here for a really good reason. So these are not, these two over here, these are not going to have any adhesive on them at all. So um, I'm going to back these in 3M adhesive and they will both adhere to one of these. And then this one, this is clear acrylic, but both the front and the back will have that 3M adhesive. Okay, so if you're counting layers with me, we have top layer is, um, that let's say that we've laid our, our, our piece down flat. Top layer is uh, white oak plywood backed with 3M on top of one clear acrylic uh, shape. Okay, and then this one in the middle, which has 3M on both sides, so 3M and then this uh, frame and then 3M again, and then this and then 3M again, and then the back layer. I, 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 uh, I promise it's simpler than it, than it uh, sounds, but basically you just need to be able to adhere everything, okay? So I'm putting it over here because on my piece of acrylic, I will rip off the masking on this side and just add 3M on both sides, right? So I'm all about, you know, how can we maximize efficiency slash make fewer prints? I know that it's all the same amount of time, but for me, it just feels less ugh, if <laughs> if I kind of optimize my workflow as, as well as possible. OK, so you can, if you want, be done uh, after you you know save these as SVGs and turn off responsiveness. But I'm actually going to add one more little thing here on my the very front of this. I want to put um, the scientific name for baby's breath. And I'm actually let me just look that up real quick because my it's not functioning properly. So let me just go ahead and search for that and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's uh, Gypsophila, Gypsophila paniculata. So if you're using something different, obviously look up the name for that. Uh, but that's what I'm using. So uh, let's go ahead and change it to, I like this Gatkins font. And you have a couple of options here. Um, you can absolutely just engrave it right on the bottom of the frame. Uh, if you do that, I recommend having a thicker frame than I did here. So this little quarter inch frame is going to be pretty small uh, for that, which is okay. It's all right for it to be kind of simple and minimalistic. That's it. That's it's beautiful. Uh, I, however, am going to do it a little differently. Let's see. I think I accidentally stretched that at some point. There we go. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is add a tiny rounded rectangle here to kind of give it more of a label look. So let's just select your rectangle shape and just kind of make it as large as you want it. Go ahead and swap the fill in the stroke and then hit that selection tool. Come here to one of these dials on the corner and just slightly round it. You can round it as much or as little as you'd like. OK, once you've got it rounded as much as you'd like, go ahead and select both the frame and the new little rounded rectangle. And well, actually, let me say this before I do that. Uh, make sure that the curve where this line, this line right here starts to curve, you want that to be entirely uh, within this frame shape. OK, because let, let's let me just show you what it would do otherwise. So let's pop it up and let's say that I just barely overlapped it. When we merge this or unite this, it would have that dip in there. And that just looks strange to me. So just make sure that it's down far enough that the you're, you have a right angle here instead of some weird other angle. OK, so go ahead and select both. Go to Object Align Horizontal Align Center. I have it in my panel here, but otherwise it's Object Align. OK, and then uh, Pathfinder Unite. OK, so now you have a little bit more space to put your label. And it's going to kind of protrude up a bit into uh, the, the clear acrylic. So it's up to you if you like that look or not. It's totally fine if you do not. 
Um, but that's just like an extra, an extra little added touch you can make. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the size of this. I'm going to go ahead and just click it to select, right click, create outlines, and then Pathfinder Unite since I'm using a script font. Okay, and that, what that does is it makes sure that your little pieces that overlap aren't going to mess you up in the Glowforge. Now I'm going to take this again and select it and horizontal align center just because you want or I would like my um, <sighs> my my text to be centered nicely. Now I'm going to just kind of play around with where I want this. Do I want it all the way up like that? I think I do. Um, but you get to make it uh, your own choices. So if you think it looks better kind of centered this way, whatever. OK, so just get it to a place where you like it. And at this point, you have all of the pieces designed for your files. You'll want to just save them. I always save uh, as an Illustrator file first with a clear name. So this one's going to be, oh dear, what is it gonna be? Um, Boho Arch Framed Botanical. So that's a lot. <laughs> and then I just save it as an Illustrator file. Illustrator files are easier to work with later down the road if you decide to come back and make a bunch of these. Um, and then make sure you go to File, Save As, SVG, Save, SVG 1.0, turn off responsiveness, and you're good to go. Repeat that with your other document if you split yours into two. And please show me your creations. I would love to see a bunch of framed, beautiful botanicals, whether they're pressed or just dried like my uh, baby's breath. Please don't put fresh, don't put fresh, let me just say this, don't put fresh botanicals in there. That would be disgusting in like a week or two, okay? So uh, you want to make sure you're using dried or pressed. And you could do things like... Um, feathers in there instead or you could do those little kind of cattail things or like the little boho um, uh, pompous grass or uh, seasonal stuff you could do all sorts of beautiful options I'm just using something that was sitting on my kitchen counter so all right see you next week